the international company is going to look at the asset that is Channel 10 and see how viable it actually is. The, the funny thing about Channel 10, even though uh, it has a sort of the third cousin, I suppose, when you, you talk about the other commercial networks that are out there, the, the station isn't doing too badly. It's actually got a bit of audience. It is actually making revenue. But it has been a bit of a basket case as far as the owners and also to trying to shift and change uh, and bring down the costs. It's making money, but it's also to uh, it, it's 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 letting a lot of money leave the offices as well. So it has quite a bit of a challenge. I don't think it's the death knell, though. Every new owner likes to put their stamp on things. So is it safe to assume there'll be some adjustments? And, and what do you think a, a revamped 10 would look like? Look, I, I think that. By the t when the dust settles, that we're going to see a, a station that is going to be it's going to be assessed as to whether it is viable to continue on with. Um, they will obviously look to, to put some cost structures in that are going to limit more money going out. Um, they probably might try to bit of AI and look to reduce costs that way. But I think that if they're going to be serious about bringing that station alive again and making sure that it is viable in a commercial network, they're going to have to invest in their people and invest in their programs. And there is an opportunity to do that. I just don't think it's been done over the last eight years. This, of course, comes, Nick, amid hundreds of job cuts at the other commercial networks, seven and nine. Is the TV industry experiencing its own print moment? It really is. I mean, it's struggling. There's, there's a pot of gold out there that the advertisers are throwing money around at, but the pot hasn't changed so much, but the competition to get access to that gold has been. So it has seen free-to-air TV and television particularly has struggled. Uh, it's got so much competition for audience numbers, for bringing uh, programs together and the cost to doing that, that it has been quite a struggle. But when you do it well, and some of the programs that have hit, I mean, we only have to look back to last year when the Matildas uh, were playing in the semi-final of the FIFA Women's World Cup. They got over 7 million viewers to that. Free to air and television has an, a very big opportunity to still remain uh, relevant. It just has to get its content right and do it better. Of course, it relies on advertising as well to keep um, uh, the numbers flowing in the order it wants. ABS data showing that $7.7 billion was spent on TV advertising in 2007. Now, by 2021, that had pretty much halved to $3.8 billion. And now online accounts for more than half of all advertising spend in Australia. I guess it's little wonder, right, that the commercials are struggling to remain economically viable. Yeah, it, it's like the pot, the pot of money is still there, but it's being shifted off into different other spaces. And there is so much more competition for that. Um, but you would be, as an advertiser or as a brand, you would make the big mistake of, of dismissing free-to-air TV or commercial TV because it still has a very strong audience. There are numbers that are still there. It's just that it's changed it a little bit. Instead of us uh, sitting down to watch the six o'clock or the seven o'clock news, uh, we get to watch it when we want to watch it. So the audience behaviour has changed, uh, but the commercial networks and the networks just generally just need to do a better job at producing their content, do it a little bit more uh, cheaply, a little bit more in an affordable manner, uh, but still leaving a high quality uh, product out there. And if they can, can do that, they'll attract back more of that sponsorship money and realise that the audiences are still there. Queensland University of Technology School of Communications Professor Anna Potter says Australia would be better served by two or even one commercial broadcasters. Do you think she's right? There is some merit in that. I think that uh, potentially we do have, for a country that's 30 million odd uh, people there, that uh, we have three, four commercial networks, a public broadcaster. There's a lot of media for a very small population. Geographically though, uh, regional, metro, we've got a very big place to be putting a lot of media around, but uh, we have got a lot of uh, competition sitting in this market. And before internet, before so social media and everything like that, uh, we would say that it was a very viable competition, but the competition's getting harder and tighter now. So there is potentially merit to say that uh, maybe only two, maybe only three commercial networks moving forward. Nick Hayes, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Rachel.